The National Broadcasting Company takes pleasure in presenting a special program. Welcome to the studios of WNBT in Radio City. Tonight we're celebrating a very special occasion, our 10th anniversary of public service. Yes, 10 years ago today, we sent you our first television... With Monitor announced, a huge facility was being built on the fifth floor of 30 Rockefeller Plaza. It would be called Radio Central. NBC's next steps were to identify key personalities to be featured. Jim Fleming was named executive producer. A typical Monitor hour will begin with the news and sports, as we've just described. The team of broadcasters, a newsman and an entertainment man, will be stars in their fields. They'll work in four-hour shifts, and they're going to be busy. Let's move along around the clock on this typical Monitor hour. Say now we're at ten minutes after the hour, and we move to the swiftly changing variety pattern of Monitor, following the fixed features of news and sports, literally turning the electronic pages of a great magazine. A constantly changing pattern. A constant forward index. In a memo, he detailed why the name Monitor was chosen. During the war, newsmen monitored the short waves for information. Now they'd be monitoring the entire country in NBC's network. The name suggested alertness, service, vigilance, and a sense of responsibility. These men and women wouldn't be announcers. They'd be communicators. One radio veteran in the fold was Ben Grower. Born in New York in 1908, he was a child actor who became an NBC staff announcer in 1930. All staff people had to wear tuxedo after 6 p.m. The dominant note was one of cautious formality with the listener. The doctrine was that you were a guest in the home. It was, a, you can understand it, if they came out of the uh, of a kind of a rigid doctrine of uh, decorum and courtesy and correctness, this was the thing to do. And this was even reflected in the, bro in the broadcaster's work. The earliest hosts or masters of ceremonies were very square. They had to be. The idea was that uh, you were the spokesman for this dignified, responsible, highly ethical uh, corporation. They weren't sure of themselves and in the new medium to take chances or to fool around or to loosen up. It was uh, ceremonial rather than creative. Grower covered Olympic Games announced for Walter Winchell's Jurgens Journal, and was hand-selected by Arturo Toscanini to support NBC's Symphony Orchestra. By World War II, he was a senior commentator and reporter. I used to do a roundup, and we'd call in eight or ten capitals of the world. We were beginning to have a staff in each of the great cities, full-time, not stringers. Now, I got word just before I went on that we would go Paris first and then London. So I introduced Paris, and Paris was on. As I was sitting there, and my head was down, musing and listening to what was coming from Paris, while with the other ear I was listening to London, upcoming London, I heard a voice say, look up, Ben. And there was the director of the program in behind the glass booth with a piece of paper written on it, Spain, and signaling me, not London, Spain, Spain. When we finished the show, I suddenly said, well, who said, look up, Ben? What was all that? He said, with 30 seconds to go, London coming, RCA said they now have the Madrid circuit, and I wanted to get it fast before we lose it. I wrapped in the glass, and you didn't uh, respond. You couldn't hear me. I thought, maybe you're plugged into London. So I said, hey, Fred Bate, I think Ben is plugged into you. Tell him to look up. So Jack's voice went out to London, 3,000 miles. Bate said, hey, look up, Ben, came back to me 3,000 miles, and I looked up six feet into the director's eye. Communicators would be drawn from a wide pool of talent and paired. Some of the people suggested were Arlene Francis, Morgan Beatty, Hugh Downs, Red Barber, Goodman and Jane Ace, Fred Allen, Bob Trout, Faye Emerson, Bob and Ray, Frank Blair, Burgess Meredith, Boris Karloff, Bennett Cerf, and Dave Garraway. Well, I suppose that I have disseminated some knowledge. Uh, I can't help because I've been talking for 30 years now, and I figured it out, and I must have said something in then all that time of some wisdom, and a lot of people listen to television and radio, so I must have disseminated some wisdom. Yes, I go along with that. How much, I don't know. Of what quality, I don't know. And now, here's Arlene Francis. Whose very first show on NBC Radio was What's My Name? 
But since you already know that answer, what is the name of the exciting new program concept that began NBC's fourth decade? Here's a clue. Right, monitor. Our motto was going places and doing things. And we called our hosts communicators. And no one could communicate better or more warmly than Dave Garraway. Uh, isn't that a mad noise? That's Monitor's trademark, and we'll call your attention to the show most any time you hear it. In fact, they, they now have a thing called the Monitor Mambo. Mambo, if you like. And we're going to give you a sneak preview of it. It's just been recorded by Perry's Prado, the old Mambo King. It's so new that the record is still soft and quivering here. Garraway was a radio veteran and jazz hound who had an unusual homespun way of talking to his audience. He entered TV in 1949 with Garraway at large. As he mentioned earlier, he'd been hosting today since January of 1952. Today I got up at 3.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and I can never truthfully say I enjoyed the first 10 minutes of it at all. <laughs> in 10 minutes, the cold water and the orange juice did the work. And then I really look forward to an exciting day because the Today Show had five or six new guests. I would not sometimes know who they were. Sometimes I would know who they were. I'd read their books if it was an author. An author can always tell whether or not you've read his book, mm -hmm. by the way. In the first 10 seconds, <laughs> you can tell whether you've read the book, the dust jacket, the book, or just thumb through it. Uh, it's funny to watch their expression. And if you've read the book, their gratitude is a visible thing. All kinds of people came on that show. Of course, we had 12,500 guests, we estimated, during the time I was there. Imagine whoever had a better job in the world than to be allowed to sit in a chair, have brought to him 12,500 interesting, exciting people, many of them beautiful girls, all the beautiful <laughs> movie actresses and whatnot, put down there for five or ten minutes, talked with them, and then taken away, and another one put down, or uh, a monkey in between. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be a better job, could there? But Garraway initially wanted no part of Monitor. However, Pat Weaver asked him personally, and Garraway trusted Weaver implicitly. He agreed. On Monday, May 2nd, the network produced a closed circuit practice hour. Monitor, fourth hour. Monitor, a continuing service in sound, a new dimension in radio. Monitor bringing you your story. Yours because you wrote it. Part of it, at least. 18 seconds past the hour. The hour. Not a long segment of time as a man's life is measured, but long enough to bring many changes since last we monitored the news. And now, from the Monitor Newsroom, John Cameron Swayze. Here, in brief, are the top news stories of the hour. President Eisenhower told his news conference this morning that a top-level Big Four meeting might clarify the atmosphere in the world and also test Russia's sincerity. Meanwhile, at Warsaw, Soviet Premier Bulganin told a Russian satellite conference that the Soviet Union will give the West's invitation careful study. At Paris, the NATO Council wound up its meeting expressing a hope that hostilities cease in the Far East. And in the war on polio, the U.S. Public Health Service reports that the number of polio cases among persons vaccinated with the Salk vaccine now is 62. From the sports world, a few items. Two major league games are underway right now. But the big news of the day is the return of Ted Williams to the Boston Red Sox. A financial settlement with his recently divorced wife paved the way for the 36-year-old slugger's return to the Boston club on Friday. At Wrigley Field in Chicago, the Brooklyn Dodgers are trying to win their 12th straight victory, their 23rd victory in 25 games. And at the moment, the score is 0-0 in the top of the second inning. The Pittsburgh Pirates are playing the Braves at Milwaukee. The game is in the bottom of the first inning at the moment, and the score, Pittsburgh leads 2-0. All the games in the American League are just getting underway. It's Cleveland at New York, Chicago at Boston, Detroit at Washington, and Kansas City at Baltimore. Two night games, both in the National League. Giants at Cincinnati and the Phillies at St. Louis. Monitor reports the weather over the nation. Generally, the weather is fair and mild. In the northeast, a weak high-pressure area has moved in, 
bringing with it warm temperatures and mostly fair skies. And fair weather is in prospect for the next 36 hours. In the southeast, the high-pressure area has stalled for the moment against the warm air mass, causing scattered showers in the Kentucky and Tennessee areas. In the west, a series of low-pressure systems are causing local clouds and showers. From coast to coast, temperatures are mild, with a maximum of 60 expected, except in the northern half of New England and the Great Lakes. Hanging over the head of every newscaster is, of course, the dread of one of those times when everything just... Well, listen to Bob and Ray. Now, about the material. We have been recording material with names who are well known to you, going to our big stars, as where we will have them do a session with us in which they will record a lot of different information that is in good forms in these little brief inserts. For instance, you get a star like Fred Allen or Jimmy Durante, and you have them record different human interest stories about themselves, you know, their first long pants, their first engagement, the thing they'll never forget, the, uh, the, the biggest faux pas they ever made, whatever the subject matter might be, each an individual little hunk that you will pick up at the proper time when it's relevant to whatever the form of the show is on during the service or even just uh, because you want the pace. You want a one-line joke, so you punch up a joke and uh, he says, uh, drink a slow poison, that's all right, I'm in no hurry. Back to the man, you see, the communications man. Or it doesn't have to be just comedy, although there again we talked about getting a more variety of names perhaps by getting the club comics, you know, fellows like even Henny Youngman, Jack Carter, those boys, and get them in and have them do something like the Joe Miller joke book on file. They tell joke, 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 joke in their own style, but you just punch up a joke. Now, this is something that these boys wouldn't do, except that we will, for them, uh, at a proper time, say that they're opening in the Latin Quarter or that they're going on as a guest star on such and such a show. In other words, it'll be good for them to be on and do this and do other things. We might have satires of all of our shows done by Bob and Ray or done by uh, a cast of comedians in, again, little vignette forms. ...background information on a story which developed only last night, a story which may affect each and every one of us. Come in, Leslie Leffingwell in London. This is Leslie Leffingwell in London, England. With the format all but set, it was time for a soft launch. 